Blender 4.3 is now out of beta, and along with it, Grease Pencil 3.0 has finally been integrated into the official commit. My name is Paul Kajeji for CGCookie.com, and this is a quick overview of some of the new features you'll find in Grease Pencil 3.0. Now this has been a long time coming. It was hoped that 3.0 would be ready in the 4.2 LTS release of Blender, but a lot of the features were still pretty buggy and just not there yet. As sad as that made me, I am also glad that they took the time to improve the architecture and make it as feature rich as it is for this release. A lot has changed in how Grease Pencil behaves, looks, and where you're going to find much loved tools if they make the cut. So in this video, I'm going to take you through some of the features which are most significant, which will affect my own workflow going forward, and which you'll be really excited to know about. First off, most toolboxes and menus have been cleaned up. Some tools have been consolidated so that brushes now include tint, and shapes all share a single icon with a pop-out to select which primitive you'd like to draw. Some features have been moved into menus. For example, curve editing. Curve editing was not a feature that I used a great deal, but it did have its uses, especially if you liked to treat a stroke more like a Bezier curve object. This feature has now been moved to the Edit Mode Stroke menu, and you can now select a number of curve types to edit, including Poly, Bezier, and NURBS. Some features, such as Guides, have been removed for the time being, as trying to integrate this part with the new architecture created way too many bugs. Now it has been reported that it will be brought back in a future release, possibly better than before. Grease Pencil now leans heavily on the asset library, much like other tools in Blender. As a result, it is way easier to create, store, and share your own custom brushes. You can set a custom icon, which will also be stored in the brush asset library, and you can always revert the default brush back to its original settings. The asset window is visible by default. This means there are now three places that you can access your brush set from. The brush tool settings make it more obvious that you can toggle into the erase tool using your control key, and you can set the default eraser brush to any setting that you like. The erase tool itself has been improved. It now cuts points accurately and generates caps on the ends of strokes that remain. If the erase is set to soft, it also takes into account levels of transparency to simulate a feathering effect. A stroke's thickness was normally set under Grease Pencil's layer properties and could be set to screen or world space. This means that the brush radius would be relative to the viewport, so if you zoomed in or out, the line would appear to proportionally thicken or thin out. So to fix this, stroke thickness was removed and renamed radius unit, placed under the brush advanced settings. You can now set this radius to view, in which the radius will be measured in pixels relative to your screen, or scene, in which the radius will be measured in whatever world units you've chosen as your scene default. Both, however, will be locked to 3D space, so you don't get that weird thickening effect if you zoom in or out. Input samples was how Grease Pencil would tell you how densely packed together points should be along a stroke. This came in handy if you're drawing fast, as it would space out points according to the speed at which you drew. It's now measured as a percentage of the brush size. For example, if we've set our brush to 20 pixels and we're using a dot line type, at 100%, the widest each dot is spaced apart is 20 pixels. So you can clearly see the gap here. At 10%, the widest will be spaced at two pixels. This means that more points are generated to fill in those gaps. Remember, more points in a stroke 
are like more polygons or verts. It gives Blender a lot more information to process. So set this at a level where you feel the brush performs well, but also optimally. Material mapping has also been improved. And so tools such as the Transform Fill tool have been replaced. The new tool is now called Gradient and is found under Edit Mode. Here's how it works. You'll need a gradient material to work with, so let's make one. Next, we need to draw a few shapes set to the gradient material. We can even change the color attribute for each of these. Now already you can see how the gradient is consistent across all the shapes regardless of where they're drawn. This is a huge improvement on the old system, which would map textures and gradients along a vector set between the first and second points of a shape's stroke. It now maps out the texture from the shape's origin point along a consistent vector in line with your screen space. So if you draw a shape out along the negative x direction, the gradient does not seem to map in reverse. Let's toggle into edit mode and select this shape. We can use the gradients tool to plot out a new vector easily. Just click and drag. As we move this second point around, the gradient is rotated and scaled between these two points. Selecting more than one shape, you can rotate or scale the gradient across all these shapes at once. Personally, I think calling it gradient is a little misleading, as this works for textured materials also. A halftone texture, for example, can be scaled and rotated independently or set to the same vector across multiple shapes, just as we did with the gradient material. Some small improvements make for much better workflows, especially if you're working in a maximized viewport on a pen display, such as the new Wacom Movic 13. In draw mode, a right click will bring up information to edit your brush settings at a glance. You can now edit the color, the mode, radius and strength, as well as what layer you're drawing on and what material you're using all on the fly. Layers can now be grouped into their own folders. If you come from a 2D painting background, you already know how useful this is, especially if you work with a lot of layered assets. Groups will allow you to keep several shapes and strokes, all on the same grease pencil object, but organized more efficiently. Merge functions now have a merge group option in the specials menu as well. And of course, the really big feature that everyone should be excited about is that grease pencil objects can now be used with geometry nodes. The Grease Pencil modifier tabs have been brought in line with the style of all the other objects modifier panels. Now because the overall architecture behind Grease Pencil is so different, the developers have been working hard on making migration from Grease Pencil 2.0 as seamless as possible. You can open all the files of your Grease Pencil projects in Blender 4.3 and they'll automatically be rewritten to fit in with the new Grease Pencil 3.0 standards but they are not backwards compatible with older versions, so make sure you keep a backup of those files in case things do go wrong. Also remember the migration process is still ongoing, and some features are going to be buggy for a few updates. But overall, this is a huge improvement to Grease Pencil, a real step forward in making it a more integrated tool with the rest of Blender.